Okay, hi guys. Um, we're going to be looking at surrealism in this uh, particular, well, I don't know, vodcast, I suppose. Um, and uh, I'm going to take you through some things to do with surrealism. This is a very basic introduction, but we're going to be looking particularly at where surrealism comes from and also how it relates in some ways um, to film. So the main impetus here is to look at it how it, uh, as it, it relates to film. All right, let's start. Let's take a look at a few painted images of, uh, well, these are surrealist images. Let's take a look at this one. See what you see here. It's sort of a spinning top but it's also a building that's going on there. We can definitely see that there is a landscape sort of image uh, there as well. Okay, let's move on. All right, look at this image. Uh, again, we can start to recognize certain elements to this image. We can recognize it. It's not just completely um, ob ob obscure. There are certainly objects in this image, but the nature of the objects is slightly strange, isn't it? We can see that there is this headless torso of a woman over here with her hand outstretched. And in the background, we've got this rather large object, uh, which looks kind of like an animal. There's sort of a trunk going on here. There's some horns over here, uh, maybe some nostrils, I don't know, um, and definitely tusks as well. So there are elements that we recognize, but at the same time, we don't quite recognize it either. But again, we've got some background images. So there's a sense of escape here, there's a sense of a, a landscape almost, um, but with objects in them that we don't quite recognize, but have got elements that are slightly familiar to us. This is an image that was painted by a man called Magret, and um, it is called, uh, well, the um, what it says down here in French is, this is not a pipe. Um, well, you could argue that it clearly is a pipe. I mean, we've got something that looks very much like a pipe here. The trick is, of course, that it is a picture of a pipe. And what Margrethe is doing is he's, he's having a bit of fun with us. He is saying, well, you think it's a pipe, but actually what you're looking at is a picture of a pipe. So he's getting you to think about representation and getting you to think about, well, what do we consider to be reality? And that's kind of something that we're going to look at when it comes to surrealism. OK, moving on. This is one of the most famous pictures that you will find in all of Surrealism. It's painted by an artist called Salvador Dali, and it's called The Persistence of Memory. Now, there's a couple of things, only two things I want to point out at this point. Um, we are dealing, when we look at Surrealism, with a, a, a sort of dreamlike idea of the way the world should work. So dreams are very important to the Surrealists. Let's take a look at these two things. The first thing I want you to notice is the way in which the clocks have been melted. And if we look at these clocks, think about what clocks are. Well, if we think about them particularly. Clocks meter out the time of the day, and every second is exactly the same length of time as the second that came before it and the second that comes after it. So time is very, very rigid and very logical. Um, so we know that tick-tock, tick-tock of time will always be the same, unless, of course, you are in a dream. And then time seems to pass very, very quickly or very, very slowly. So time becomes, it changes when you think about it in those terms, when you think about it in terms of the dream and what goes on in the dream. So what Dali is doing here is he's taking something which is recognizable, the clock, but he is changing it slightly. He's melting it so that the meaning is, um, he, he's saying we're going to mess with this slightly. We're going to change it so that it becomes a little bit less of the rigidity that we'd find in a normal clock and becomes a little bit more um, flexible, becomes a little bit more changeable. So that's the first thing I want to show you. The second thing I want to show you is just over here. Can you recognize what this is? Well, it looks like an eyelash. And that's something that's quite important. We're going to see this over and over again when it comes to surrealism. Eyes and eyelashes, well, eyes, are very important because they are an immediate symbol of seeing things, obviously. And when we look at Ong Chan Delu, there's a very famous moment that we see when an eye is cut open. And Buell and Dali are saying something about the way in which we see things. Here we can see the eye is closed, and this might have something to do with the way in which one goes about dreaming. You have to have your eyes closed, well, normally, when you go to sleep, and so that might be something that he's saying there. Also notice the nose there and the face down there lying out that way. Also another clock over there with the ants in it. We'll talk about the ants later. 
Okay, let's talk about the Surrealists. Well, when we think about the Surrealists, we are thinking about a movement, an artistic movement, that took place from about 1923 um, up until the mid-1930s or thereabouts. Um, but the thing that's important to notice about this or know about the Surrealists is that they didn't exist just on their own. They came out of something, and they came out of another artistic movement, which were called the Dadaists. Now, we're not going to spend too long looking at the Dadaists, but we do need to understand that that's where the Surrealists came from. The Dadaists came from an impetus of World War One. World War One is something we're going to spend some time on today, looking at and investigating how World War One was this massive um, sort of... Uh, firing shot that that inspired the surrealists and the dadaists um, into their way of looking at the world and their way of thinking so we're going to spend some time looking at this world war one and finding out what was it about it that made it different that then inspired the dadaists and surrealists um, to uh, to go about looking at the world as they did okay so let's look at the history 